Um, first, I'd like to give all praises unto Yahweh, Basham, Yahweh Shai, and uh, double honors unto the apostles and elders at Great Millstone, and honors to you brothers out there on the highways and the uh, byways, teaching this truth in all sincerity, man. Okay, shalom to you, uh, brothers out there that's listening and learning. You know, and uh, supporting the ministry, and uh, to the sisters as well. And um, this video is I'm um, gonna go into uh, one of the main end times prophecies, uh, which is the mark of the beast. Um, and and um, further, you know, furthermore to show that the um, implantable RFID chip um, is the mark of the beast. Um, the system or the infrastructure on which the mark of the beast is gonna run because anytime you have a you you want to um you want to you know complete an enterprise which is gonna um, control how people buy and sell there has to be an um, infrastructure built to su su support such an um, enterprise all right that infrastructure is known as the internet of things you know it's currently um, being built all around you you know um throughout every industry on the planet earth rfid and other forms of um uh, devices it's known as ubiquitous computing two terminologies you can look into with ubiquitous computing and ubiquitous rfid so um salakia right okay salakia my work so you know it's um yeah so you got ubiquitous computing so everywhere you look you're looking you're gonna you're gonna find cctv cameras you're gonna find rfid readers um sensors of all different kinds these are all devices which are all connected through the internet okay and every particular device and every uh particular thing can become identifiable um, especially with RFID that's why it is known that RFID is at the core of the Internet of Things because it allows everything to be identified yeah, yes, sir, Charlie. okay let's turn that down all right it, it um, allows everything to be identifiable and quantifiable okay that's why RFID is used heavily in what um, the logistics industry all right so we see there's an infrastructure and a, uh, a system that's being built up all right and um just show you an image right here and the, the mark of the beast is the implantable rfid chip because once they implant um a person with the rfid chip it incorporates them into that internet of things it incorporates them into that system you become incorporated you become a you become a thing which is uh, digitally identifiable, all right, within that system, okay? Now, what I wanna show is, uh, in this particular lesson, is how pretty much, what, what they're gonna do is, they're gonna um, bring in a great crisis, which is gonna bring an end to the current way of things, so that they can bring in the new way of things man which is the end of private property and basically a, a welfare a giant welfare or rationing system whereby uh, um the state a centralized government a centralized world government which is going to be controlled by the the super elite are going to con completely control all resources on the planet earth including the people because according to them um, so-called humans are nothing more than a human resource a resource itself which needs to be controlled and quantified all right so part of that is they got to get rid of this money system they got to crash this money system man all right and that's part of the reason why the scripture tells you rich and poor everyone is going to have to come into this system because there is going to be nothing else because the current system is going to be destroyed you got guys like Mayweather, their their so-called wealth 
is is tied into what the money system the the stocks the shares all these things are going to come to naught to bring in a new system which is going to be built upon that infrastructure which has already been formed now this is a good website here it says this is terrifying will all your money be wiped out in the blink of an eye all right uh, so this is Egon von Greyers. He says fake news and fake assets are everywhere. Let's start with social media, which dominates major parts of the world. Facebook, for example, has two billion active use users. WhatsApp has 1.2 billion users, and Instagram 700 million. There will obviously be quite a lot of overlap between the various social media. But what is clear that these three apps reach billions of people, and their power is much bigger than that of any other media. Social media has more impact than newspapers or television and is the only media that 2.3 billion people follow regularly. And, and that's all part of the system, okay? That's going to take over and be a, a pivotal part of how they control people in the new world order because everyone ultimately is going to have one social media account which is, which is going to be their way to interact with the world, all right? Um, they show you that in the circle. Says most people are in particular, uh, in particular, young people don't watch television and don't read the papers. They get all their news from social media. But I want to jump down. All right. It says today we have a situation when virtually all assets and all liabilities are just electronic entries, leveraging the underlying real values tens hundreds and thousands of times money is leveraged many times stocks are also leveraged by the issuance of various derivative instruments like ETFs or futures which supposedly reflect the underlying instrument but which in effect is just an electronic entry with nothing behind it since the global debt position including unfunded liabilities and derivatives amounts to over two two quadrillion so should global assets, but global assets are not even a fraction of, of that. Supposedly global assets are 250 billion, but these are all bubble valuations that will implode as the debts and liabilities implode, which is all set up. That's all been set up, man. Because in order for them to bring in a new system, they need to implode and destroy the old system whilst keeping the infrastructure, all right? All your money wiped out in the blink of an eye. I am spending some time in Sweden currently and experiencing the cashless society because right now Sweden is one of them um, flagship countries that they're rolling out this infrastructure heavy. It says in many places cash is not accepted. Everyone wants credit card or electronic payment. Banks ch charge a, a high fee for anyone depositing cash. Nobody realizes that their money is just an electronic entry that be, can be turned off in, in a second by the government, okay? This means that their money will be totally gone and will never reappear, okay? And that's actually gonna happen. There's gonna come a time where there's gonna be a global financial crisis among all these different banks which are all leveraged or whatever the case may be, the, the, the proper terminology, and all the, you're in, your your um, money is going to be deemed an investment in these banks and it's all going to be lost. I don't care if you're a millionaire, I don't care how much money you got in that bank, it's all going to be lost and at the end of the day, it's not going to come down to who's got money in the bank, it's going to come down to who controls the state, who controls everything, who has the power, all right? And so this means that their money will be totally gone and will never reappear again. This is what governments and central banks are introducing into most Western countries. People believe that their money is safe in the bank and don't realize that the electronic money is not introduced for convenience but to stop people taking money out when the heavily leveraged and insolvent banks run out of cash. What everyone with a bank account must understand is that one day there will be little or no money left in the bank. ATMs will then be closed and no money will be available. And which is going to what send send the whole entire uh, world into chaos. But out of that chaos, they want to bring a new order, which they're going to reestablish through what martial law, state control, 
totalitarianism. This is an elegant solution to the insolvency of the financial system. No paper money will be available, nor any electronic money, thus there is no money to be had. At that point, the government will no longer print money for private individuals, since it can't be used. Instead, they will print coupons to be used in shops and for other expenses. Now, what you got to understand is that's what they did um, in previous crises. In this crisis, they won't need to print coupons. There will already be an infrastructure there. They All they have to do is use the infrastructure which already exists. And instead of you getting a, a printed coupon, you're going to get an electronic coupon or an electronic credit by way of your implant. You see, through the infrastructure which already exists. This is already happening in countries like Zimbabwe today. Alternatively, they will allow people to spend a very limited amount of their bank balance every month. There will of course still be massive money printing to save the financial system as all assets implode, but very little of that money will reach ordinary people. Most people will consider this scenario as totally unrealistic and worse than doomsday. Hopefully it will never happen, but the point I'm making is that by handing over assets to the banks and ultimately to the government which controls the banks, most people will totally have surrendered control of their assets. It is of course not only cash which would suffer this destiny, but all assets which are held within the financial system, whether it be stocks, bonds or any other security held in electronic form. And ultimately, you see what's going to happen is, once they bring in the crisis, all assets, whether they be physical or, or, or electronic, will be transferred into the hands of the government. And if you want access to resources, to goods and services, you're going to have to go through the government, but you're going to have to receive your mark of the beast because that's the system by which resources are going to be controlled. All right? And that all goes into what agenda, agenda 2030. You can read about the different goals of Agenda 2030. How it, it's all about resource management, sustainable development. How are they going to do that? By controlling resources, right? And that's why you got things floating around like the the idea of a basic income, which is basically a global welfare system, right? That's basically what the mark of the beast is going to be used for a global welfare system whereby the individual let's read about this basic income system real quick a basic income is a periodic cash payment whatever unconditionally delivered to all on the in the individual basis that's why everyone is going to have to have a chip even if you're a baby and you're going to have a certain amount of resources allocated to you based upon who you are without means test or work requirement that is basic income has the five characteristics. Periodic, it is paid at regular intervals, like a ration basically, not as a one-off grant. Um, cash payment is paid in an appropriate medium exchange, allowing those who receive it to decide what they spend it on, which they're not gonna be able to decide what you spend it on. Okay, you that, that time is now. <laughs> That's gonna be done away with. You ain't gonna have no choice. You are just gonna have to do what you do what it do. It is not therefore paid either in kind such as food or services or in vouchers dedicated to a specific use, but it will be. It will be. That's what. That's how it works. Look, look up any crisis in history, that's how rationing systems work. Individual it is paid on an individual basis and not, for instance, the household. It is paid to all without means test. Now what does it tell you in the prophecy? He calls it all. Okay, unconditional is paid for without requirement to work or to demonstrate willingness to work, blah, blah, blah. They make it sound nice, but it's not going to be. All right, so let's get the, the precepts. This is Job 5 and 12. It says, he disappointed the devices of the crafty because the new world order... All right, is what is the device of the crafty, the, the serpent, which represents what the elites of the so-called white men. They have a plan, right? And they, they, you know, Agenda 2030, you can look at that. You can look at the, the, the general New World Order plan. And the, the, the core of that plan requires a system of um, control of all resources. 
an internet of things. And the center of the internet of things is what? The RFID. And in order to, uh, 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 um, to bring the people into it, the people need to be chipped. It's that simple. So that their hands cannot perform their enterprise because ultimately they're gonna, they're gonna try and bring the system in through chaos, right? Revelation 12 and 12 through chaos, through mass death and confusion. But well, ultimately, they're not going to be able to bring this to complete fruition. Yahweh Shai is going to put an end to them. Because if he didn't, they would um, either kill or, or chip even onto the elect. Right? So let's get uh, Revelations 12. And you can watch the um, uh, GMS Gallows on the Street, uh, one of the latest videos going into the global income and AI. It's all connected. The, the whole AI is all AI is all about have, possessing the ability to um, process large amounts of data and make decisions in real time. That's why they're developing AIs. All right, because it, it, for them, it's more controllable and more uh, uh, more efficient than having people managing the system. Because it's going to be a digital system. Let's get Revelations thirteen. All right, and when you understand what's happening, it brings the scripture to life, man. And that's why you got these other Israelite groups. They're telling you madness, like oh, the the mark of the beast is sin, but they can't show you how that system or that thing is being manifested. But we can show you that how how the implantable RFID chip is going to be required in order for you to buy and sell, in order for you to receive goods and services. And we're showing you how. The infrastructure for that system is being built around you on a daily basis throughout all industries and countries worldwide. Because we're in that time for that prophecy to happen. The mark of the beast cannot just appear overnight. There has to be a, 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 a infrastructure built to support such an enterprise. Revelation 13 and 16, and he calls it all, both small and great, whether you're a celebrity, or whether you're or, or a normal average everyday dope, Joe, once they crash the system, you are then gonna be reliant on a new system. It don't matter whether you're a celebrity or not. Once they shut down your bank account, once you can't access your funds, once you can't access goods and services, and the state can take control of all goods and services, you're gonna have to go to the state. And if the state say to you, well, in order for you to receive goods and services controlled by the state you got to have an RFID chip you're going to have to have that RFID chip it don't whether, matter whether you're Floyd Mayweather or whether you're or, or some tramp on the streets rich or poor whether you so called got money right now or whether you don't got money you're going to have NBA players they're going to have to go take that chip if they want to get food they're going to have to go to get that chip man their platinum card and their bank account ain't going to be worth nothing it says free or bond, whether you are at liberty, so-called liberty to walk up and down in, in this man's system or whether you're in jail to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. All right, the word mark there meaning karagam, which is something inserted and that no man might buy or sell. You ain't going to be able to, to take part in the exchange of resources and goods and services because that's exactly what buying and selling is. You buy and sell what? Goods and services. You are not going to be able to, to exchange goods and services, all right, unless you have the mark of the beast. All right, if you do that, you are going to be in peril, in danger of the punishment of the state. All right? Uh, um, say he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. All right? So even these are. Uh, uh, financial experts are telling you that the day is going to come where all your money is going to be wiped out and there's going to have to be a new system whereby the government controls how you buy and sell how you exchange goods and resources this this time is coming and and it's going to happen overnight man they're going to crash this thing and it's going to put the people in a tailspin and a lot of you people don't understand that because guess why? You don't understand that the mind of Esau. You're talking about a covetous man. 
It tells you in the book of Sirach. Let me get that up on my phone real quick. It tells you in the book of uh, uh, Sirach, uh, uh, 14 and 9, a covetous man's eye is not satisfied with his portion, and the iniquity of the wicked drive up his soul. These super elites, they have a covetous eye, man. They don't, they don't want to see anyone else but them having resources, so to speak. They want to bring in a world where it's either you're of the super elite, and you have unlimited access to resources or you're just a slave and you get minimal you get what what is needed for your survival and that's what they're calling sustainable development they don't believe in private property they don't believe in you being able to go out earn money and buy what you want they believe in you as a slave getting what you get just like back in hardcore slavery the slaves receive what they needed from the slave master accordingly rations and that's what it's going to go back to a giant welfare system according to them but you see if if um if you're a man of the lord because it's really going to be a test for israel ultimately you're going to resist that and instead of trusting in esau you're going to trust in the heavenly father and you're going to resist the mark but a lot of our people they're going to trust in Esau and they're going to take the mark in hope of receiving goods and services and security. And ultimately, they're going to be destroyed. Revelations 14 and 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image. Okay, you basically, you believe the so-called white man and his power structure is God and has power of salvation. And receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and the presence of the Lamb. So if you receive the mark of the beast, all right, you're going to be destroyed, man, point blank, period. And we're warning you and telling you that the mark of the beast is the implantable RFID chip, which is going to be issued by the state, all right? And if you receive that mark, you're going to be destroyed. And we're telling you, the day's going to come where there's going to be pressure on you to take that. You better withstand that pressure. You better believe in Yahweh Shem Yahweh and his power to save and his power to, to deliver. So with that, I'm going to say Shalom.